Hello, my name is Alexander Dolhanenko and I would like to present our research on the topic of methods for image sharpness evaluation in photos of people. Uh, the idea for this research originated from a very practical problem, which frankly every professional photographer faces. After a photo session, they need to sort and filter thousands of photos based on things like composition, lighting, but most commonly image sharpness. This is the defining quality of a photo, and automating this step would significantly simplify their workflow. So the research field is image sharpness, but what is image sharpness? We can say that it is a relative value that cannot be standardized because of multiple factors, and it defines the level of detail of the given photo. Camera settings such as uh, shutter speed, ISO, and aperture, all of them influence the resulting image sharpness in one way or another. Please have a look at this example. The first image is considered sharp. Uh, image number two has motion blur. Image number three is soft due to grain. And image number four has the subject outside the depth of field, which results in overall blurriness. In short, depth of field determines the depth of the photo environment that will be in critical focus and is a direct product of the lens aperture which can be set manually. If we want to evaluate the sharpness of an image, we can use the basic mathematical approaches to do so. For example, we can use the fast Fourier transform approach and analyze the spatial domain of the image, or we could use the Laplace dispersion approach and iterate over image blocks, detect edge contrasts. However, it turns out that in the purest form, these algorithms are not effective enough for photos of people taking on professional cameras. In the results of this small experiment, we can see that there is a direct negative correlation of sharpness to background quantity. So the more background the photo has, the less sharp it will be considered by these algorithms. Therefore, we can state that since professionals evaluate portrait image sharpness based on the subjects, then processing the entire image without taking into account the quantities and types of the background will always result in very inaccurate sharpness evaluation results. So the goal of this research is to propose an improved algorithm that would allow classifying the level of sharpness of a given set of photos that would be accurate enough regardless of the background quantities and composition. So purely based on the sharpness of the faces that had to be in critical focus at the time the photo was taken. We will then compare the results with the previously mentioned algorithms. We started with identifying the steps for the improved algorithm, which are first finding all the faces in the frame, then performing calculations to determine which of these faces should be evaluated for sharpness and which should be ignored, and then proceeding to calculate the sharpness and present the result. In order to calculate the distance to the subjects and calculate the quote-unquote ideal depth of field, which are both very important steps in the process, we heavily rely on metadata analysis. Metadata is conveniently packaged within most modern image file formats. We save the crucial fields like focal length, aperture, and circle of confusion, but we also use the baked-in face coordinates if the camera produces them. And of course, the facial coordinates in the metadata are really not that common, so we incorporated a backup solution that uses cascade classifiers to locate the faces on the image and that can be easily achieved with something like OpenCV. Now, given we have retrieved the sensor size from the metadata and estimated the subject size, we can calculate the distance to that subject using the rule of optics. The main calculation effort, however, is determining which faces had to be in critical focus. We could, of course, just use the metadata aperture and base our calculations on that. However, we understand that the aperture value may have been set manually and may not have been ideal for the photo seen. So instead, we use the exposure value and maximum acceptable ISO value to determine the quote-unquote ideal depth of field using formula number two. 
we then get the boundaries of that ideal depth of field using formula three. Having the depth of field boundaries and having calculated the distances to the faces, we can easily determine which faces should be evaluated and which should be ignored. Now, to use the data from our calculations, we designed a modular architecture that implements the improved algorithm. And this will allow easily modifying and expanding the domain of our algorithm in the future. The main technologies used were Kotlin, Bosch, and OpenCV. And on the slide, you can see a debugging result snapshot of the algorithm marking the selected faces, marking the distance to them, and their estimated sharpness. The files then get marked from green to red based on their relative sharpness and presented to the user. We then evaluated the accuracy of the improved algorithm and compared the results to the base FFT and Laplace methods. We can see that the estimated accuracy is significantly higher with our approach. And keep in mind, under the hood, the improved algorithm still uses the base FFT or Laplace depending on the config, but the accuracy is higher because the processed image area is significantly reduced. We also evaluated the performance of the methods, and we can see that despite our algorithm having more steps, it still outperforms the base FFT in Laplace, just because the, the processed image area is significantly reduced. So as a result, by analyzing the metadata, gathering information about the photo, like how it was taken, under which conditions, we can then mathematically estimate and predict which faces on the image most likely have been intended to be in focus. We then use the base FFT and the PLOS methods to evaluate the sharpness of these faces, which produces reliable sharpness estimation and does it much quicker. In the future, we can further expand the domain of this algorithm. We can support photos of animals or landscape photography, and this, in turn, comes with its own challenges.